Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you with another video. All right, the Los Angeles Lakers get a victory in Portland, a rare victory in Portland, 121-112. After being down by as much as 25 points and being up by as much as 14 points, this game gave you everything you thought you would see and more. I'm going to tell you the truth. This was my favorite win of the season. This was better than the Milwaukee win. This was better than any of Denver, anything else. This was my favorite win of the entire season because it just showed us that we have the ability to never say die, come back and fight. Um, Thomas Bryant, LeBron James, Dennis Schroeder, Patrick Beverly, those guys contributed to no end. Some of them had more stats than others, but I don't think we could have won without all of those four uh, giving us what it is they gave us, Troy Brown included. We just got a nice overall team victory with some spectacular individual performances. So that's really what I want to say about this game. The team played well enough to overcome what was just stellar shooting by the Portland Trail Blazers in the first half. They were shooting threes left and right. Anthony Simons hit six of eight threes in the first half. Nas had hit three of three threes. It was looking real bad. Drew Eubanks had four blocks. Uh, you know, Grant was jumping all over the place. Uh, Josh Hart nearly had a triple-double. It was a very, very good performance for the Portland Trailblazers through a couple quarters, but my Lakers, we weren't having it. We just simply were not having it. After getting out to an early 14-point lead with LeBron James and Thomas Bryant shooting really, really well from behind the arc to start the game, uh, we slowed down and got cold, allowed them to get hot, and the lead went to a, a really, really spectacular place for the Portland Trailblazers at the half. We came out in the third quarter and started playing defense. We started getting to Thomas Bryant the ball more, which is what I've been saying. We need to simulate trying to feed him the ball in the second half, just like we would AD, so we can have those those rhythms in place because that was one of our biggest problems in the first half of the season. When AD was out there, we were having times where he was running around in the second half. We couldn't get him the ball, and we would end up losing basketball games. This is why I wanted us to do what we did with Thomas Bryant tonight, and it worked. We got him the ball. He started off really, really hot, as I'd already said, hitting two threes to start the game. And he had his, his efficiency was sky high, and I neglected to say that at the halftime that he was shooting the ball so well because we had so many other things going on. But we did make it an intentional uh, move to try to get him the ball, and he just ran with it, man. 31 points. He got his number, which is number 31. He wore 31, his career high. Uh, 14 rebounds, two blocks thir of, of 12 of 15 shootings and uh, uh, from the field, and I think four of five three-point shots. Um Three of three from the free throw line. The man just shot stellar from everywhere possible. And I don't know that this wasn't the best argument for keeping him on the floor. Like I've been arguing, he needed to be on the floor against matchups where we were saying that he probably wouldn't really have much success because of what was going on uh, with the shooting, uh, particularly against Dallas. I felt like we should have called his number anyway, because even though we had some issues, it wasn't as many issues as we had with him out, not on the floor getting, you know, offensive rebounds and things like he was able to show us tonight. 31 points and 14 rebounds. That is the type of production that we neglect every time we choose not to go to him. Every time we overreact to him m m messing up on the defensive side. Do you know how much he gives you? You know what I'm saying? And then the rebounding. I mean, I don't know if there was ever a bigger indictment on small ball than seeing him continually to rebound, sent continually rebounding over people that we have trouble rebounding over when he's not on the floor. I mean, constantly rebounding over Drew Eubanks, constantly rebounding over UKF Nurkis, constantly rebounding over Jeremy Grant. Those were situations where we literally were giving up offensive rebounds left and right. Even tonight, the Portland Trailblazers had 10 offensive rebounds. We don't function without size. And when we do have size, we can damn near beat everybody all the time. And so that's what it is. Thomas Bryant showed us that there was no real logical reason for ever getting away from him. Over the last three games, we got away from him, and it was absolutely asinine. I know the matchups, what they were, but I don't care. When a guy can do what it is that he did tonight, you play him and you take whatever comes with that. You don't leave yourself without him, put five guards on the floor, and proceed to get blown out. So I'm very, very happy that we took some common sense with this particular game and applied it to what we were doing, and we were able to walk away from a, with a victory despite being down 25 dang points. And it looking like this thing was not going to go our way uh, to no end when, when things were looking as if Do Anthony Simons couldn't miss, Nas couldn't miss, Dame hitting all the free throws even though he wasn't shooting the ball very well. 
Uh, ultimately, he killed it from the line. And speaking from the line, I got to say, Dennis Schroeder is just continuing to be stellar from behind the arc. Once again, tonight, he was 10 for 10 from behind, from the free throw line. That is not to be uh, belittled or left aside or not taken seriously by any stretch of the imagination, especially since we have so many holes in our game. We want to take care of the free ones. It might actually be the most important thing the Lakers do this season. It might be. Because we have so many rebounding issues, because we have other aspects of our game that we really don't control, we're not the greatest three-point shooting team, all these different things. When we get to the line and we hit them, we make up for so much, so very much. And tonight was yet another one of those nights where that was the case. I believe we shot 21 or 27 or something like that. That is what we need. 21 points from the freebies, that makes up for so much, man. So we cannot put enough of an emphasis on the free throw line. Our guys are hitting them. And it's working. It's simply working. Thomas Bryant's perfect from the line. Dennis Schroeder, perfect from the line. It's the type of stuff we need, man. That's the type of stuff we need. So I, I couldn't be more excited. Uh, we basically doubled their points in the paint. I believe we had something like plus 60 to their plus 35. So that was excellent in the paint. Um, turnovers, we, we ended up with 13 of them after turning over the ball over like 12 times in the first half. So clearly we took care of the ball in the second half. That needs to be applauded. Uh, uh, and, and last but not least, LeBron James, 37 points, um, a bunch of rebounds, two blocks. The dude was spectacular as usual, man, driving at the rim. This was really, really a good game for him. Yeah, obviously, as I said, he started off really hot, got us out to a quick lead. But, um, you know, he, even though we went down, he didn't, he didn't lose his focus. He didn't lose his intensity. I love when his assists are up. He only had four tonight, but it wasn't like he wasn't playing uh, throughout the, you know, uh, within the flow of the game. And I think what really worked for us is we allowed Dennis Schroeder to play make a bit more tonight. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I had a great time watching Dennis Schroeder control the offense a little more this evening. I think it kind of took Russell Westbrook out of the offense a little bit. Um, when he was on the floor, he was kind of out of sorts, but he ended up getting it together, passing the rock a little more, even though the shooting and the, the scoring wasn't necessarily there. He was rebounding. He was playing some defense and he was getting some assists off. So I thought this was kind of a a cold game for Russell Westbrook. You're not going to see him play as cold as he did in the first half very often. But um, Dennis Schroeder made up for that, man. We were making sure that he was the guy getting the ball, walking the ball up a good portion of the time. And he did good things, man. Defensively, I like what I saw from him as well. Heads up plays all over the place. Just good Dennis Schroeder tonight. I, I, I am very pleased with all that I saw from him. 24 points, um, several assists. As I said, perfect from the free throw line. Uh, just, just really, really solid from T.S., and then, of course, we got to mention uh, Patrick Beverly was a plus 24 tonight. The stats didn't tell you the story. He was all in Portland's head. He got in Dame's head early, started jarring at him. I think it kind of contributed to Portland getting out to a, a, a big lead. But it was his defense and his energy, his intensity, and him firing up other guys. Him being all in everybody's faces. Him making sure that he was getting in positions to, to defend and get out and take get steals and take it the other way. I really, really thought Patrick Beverly was a huge catalyst overall to what it is that we were doing, even though the stats would tell you something else. At the end of the day, you play attention to that plus 24, and you understand exactly what he was doing on both sides of the floor. He was stellar. Uh, and like I said, Troy Brown, we couldn't win this without Troy. Troy, even though his three-point shot comes and goes, I just really like the stability he provides with his length. I like what he can do on the rebounds. I like what he can do in 50-50 situations. There's just a lot of good stuff that we got from Troy Brown and on top of some decent, solid too good shooting in the second half that sealed the deal uh so like i said this is a team win even though you got to give credit to lebron james with 37 obviously thomas bryant played like an all-star uh but but like I, I really truly believe that it comes down to just the whole team uh being intentional and not hanging their heads when the lead got crazy not losing their focus when they start seeing other teams the other team shoot threes and all that stuff not tripping off the arena none of that uh we were focused on doing what we need to do we had a fire in our belly that I thought was intentional. We had a confidence about ourselves that I thought was was evident. And the Lakers brought this game to the Portland Trailblazers uh, in, on their home floor and got us our first victory there since 2019. We ain't won there since before the pandemic. So that's how serious this is. Um, and we're up on the series, 2-1 on the Portland Trailblazers. Um, this is a big deal. They're on a three-game losing streak at this point. <laughs> ourselves a two-game winning streak against two very quality teams memphis and portland 
Uh, and, you know, we feel excellent. Going into this next game against the Clippers, we feel like we're pretty confident. Obviously, the Clippers are a very good team. We know who they are. We know what they're about, but we haven't seen them as of yet this year. And I don't think we beat them in just as long, to be honest. I, I think it's probably been that long. So this is a big deal coming up. Uh, but we're going to relish in this particular game, man. We like uh, just overall how this game played out. Uh, the fact that we were up 14 points, I was a little concerned to start the game because I just get the feeling that not just our team, but just on average, when I see one guy go off for the first 15 points for his team, rarely is that sustainable. It just ain't sustainable because what you end up having happen is if that guy can't uphold what it is that he started, then you're going to be relying upon, on other guys who haven't had shots up to see if they can, 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 can piggyback him being hot rarely do they ever especially if it's one guy shooting the ball a bunch of times so if you don't have other people touching the ball one guy scores like seven eight shots once the defense zones in on that one guy then he's gonna be getting the ball to cold people people who haven't shot at all and it just it, it rarely doesn't it turns into anything so i always say even though we get off to that big lead a guy like lebron james should understand once you get out to a 14 point lead in that fashion expect to give it back your intention is to give yourself a cushion not necessarily think that you won the game because you've done that. No, you're giving yourself a cushion that you intend to have to absorb. And so that's what I would tell LeBron James. That's exactly what I saw in that 14-point lead. Uh, was just something that that gave us a little cushion, but it was still going to be a tough game throughout, and that's exactly how it played out. But the thing about it is we are a team that can score. We know how to score. We score in the paint, histor like, and I ain't going to say historically well, but at a very, very um, – positive clip for for this league's average i think with a second in points in the paint or something like that and uh you know i told you guys that i felt that way at the beginning of the season and i was like we don't have to shoot 43s 53s because we can score more than most teams in the paint just by the type of players we got in russell lebron thomas etc we can do that and we showed that tonight you know even though they were able to get out to the heart uh, a good start you know the lakers did and that portland was able to follow that up by blowing us out we were still intentional understanding that they got to guard us too we just dropped 120-something points on so-and-so. I don't remember who it was, but we've been scoring at a high clip. So it wasn't that we couldn't cover the 25 points that they they got. We had already shown them that we could cover 14 points without them getting a single point in the same game. So it was like they were going to let us back in. We just need to be intentional on doing the things that help us and get the ball to the people who were hot, and we did that. We did that. Thomas Bryant, like I said, he barely missed a shot from anywhere, and that was key. And all the stuff that Josh Hart was doing, facilitating, Dane was doing, hitting free throws, Simon's hitting the three, Little hitting the three, Eubanks blocking shots. There was a lot going on right for the Portland Trailblazers, but at the end of the day, they had zero answer for Thomas Bryant, zero answer for LeBron James, and our other guys were just too intentional on supporting them in ways that just got us the ball. Dennis Schroeder, we couldn't do it at all without all of the different intangible things that he put on that floor as well. Um... I didn't see a whole lot of, of, of uh, winning Gabriel tonight. He didn't play as much. I'm not really sure what that was about other than the fact that LeBron James and Thomas Bryant were playing so well. So when they're balling like that, you don't really need to remove either one of those positions. And, of course, like we said, Winyan's a four. So I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it tonight. You just got to roll with the hot hand. And I thought that this was a nice game for Winyan to get a breather a little bit because he's been playing a lot of basketball and uh, throughout the you know meat and potatoes of everybody being missing, he's been one of the sturdy players that just hasn't had a break. So I thought tonight we we were able to by default buy him some some extra rest, which ain't the worst thing in the world. Um, I like what I saw from Max Christie, even though he didn't play much in the second half. In the first half, I thought he did some really good things, especially that two-handed block verticality thing that he did on Josh Hart, which will stand out for for a while. We're gonna remember just how well he's been playing the defensive end this rookie season. As I've been telling people, that's where I would actually hang my hat on with him is rebounding and defense. It's, he shines. He just simply shines. And and the three-point shot is a lot better than it was advertised. And as he continues to put on strength, he's going to become a better finisher. So I already know that Max Christie's a keeper. That part is already evident just in his rookie season. He's a keeper. Um, so I'm super excited about his upside. <laughs> Kendrick Nunn came in, did some good things, hit some shots. I'm continuing to see him get in better shape, which is ultimately the key for him. If he's in good shape, it, he's a problem. We're seeing that. The better shape he gets in, the more confident he is, the more intentional he becomes on scoring the ball. What I don't want him to do is become a ball hog. He has ball hog tendencies, and that makes for bad basketball. But we do want to give him room to, to create and dribble 
and put himself in a position to to get comfortable with what it is that he does. And so we don't want to overreact to him trying to do that. Because once you become more comfortable seeing a guy dribble a little more and get used to what it is that he does, then you're not as frustrated seeing him not give the ball up as quick. You know, it's just like anything else. You Once a guy proves himself to be really good at something, then you, you don't mind seeing him in ISO situations. So Kendrick is going to have to continue to to, to hit shots um, in those situations. If he's going to over dribble, if he's not going to pass to Russell Westbrook in situations like that, you had better connect uh, because we're taking a tally of every single time you refuse to pass the rock. Know that. But for the time being, as long as they connect, I'm excited about what you can do. Uh, but continuity and, and, and unselfish play is it's the only way to play smart in the NBA. It's the only way to play smart. So that's something I wanted to say. Um, what else, man? I think that's pretty much it. Who else on our team? I don't think we used too many players. We only went like seven or eight deep. Uh, you know, this wasn't one of those nights where we really went too deep into the bag. Uh, Portland had to stop four players, essentially. And they had no answer for those players. Um, you know, the LeBron James, Thomas Bryant, they're going for 68 points between the two of them. And you look at Dennis Schroeder adding an extra 24. It's just, it's really, really a lot of protection um, from just a few players. And so, big win. Huge win. My favorite win. I thought this was a spirited effort to win in a place we rarely win in against a team that usually has our number. Um, the fact that we were up 14 and ended up coughing it back up, went down by 25, it looked like it was bleak, but it didn't actually feel like you were completely out of it. Even when at the halftime, I was like, you know, we're on, I think we're on par to lose the game, but I don't think Portland stays as hot. I said that. I was like, it's just not, you know, it's one of those things where it's like both teams have to respect each other's ability to score at the end of the day. And the fact that we had already gotten out to a 14-point lead just told me that Portland's 25-point lead wasn't safe. It just wasn't safe. You know what I mean? And um, I, I was concerned that Anthony Simons would continue to shoot that way. But Dame, I feel the same way about Dame as I feel about uh, John Morant in the last game. They just don't have any shooting discipline, man. You know, some superstars, they have the green light. And I grew up on Kobe Bryant, so I don't want to sound like a hypocrite when I can criticize this. But I just don't like seeing players shoot 30 shots, bro, when they're only hitting like seven, eight of them. If your if your shooting is that bad, you got to trust that the rest of your talent is around you is going to be able to make up for some of the scoring you're not making. You know what I mean? And so I don't want to I don't want to say that I I I know anything at all in comparison to Dame Lillard on the basketball floor. Clearly, I'm I'm not a basketball mind like that. But just from a layman's perspective, I think Dame probably could afford to be a passer tonight and would have had much more success. Cuz you look at the rest of his teammates, some of them were really really getting it going. A guy like Anthony Simons should have never stopped shooting. I like Nazir Little should never stop shooting. And you look at Dame Lillard and you look at the 13 threes he shot up. I'm like, man, I didn't need you shooting those 13 threes if I'm a Portland fan. I need those threes to go to the guys who are higher efficiency shooters. So for me, this is why I enjoy our team this year. Even though we have all the holes and the complaining that we can do about this team, I appreciate beyond the shadow of a doubt the ability for us to not overshoot every night. We don't have LeBron James is a smart basketball player. Sometimes he'll do this, but not very often. He ain't gonna give you a six for thirty. He's not gonna do it, man. And, and even Russell Westbrook, to a degree, sometimes we'll have a six for eighteen game, but that's rare. We usually cap it off if we if we ain't scoring too much. It's usually about thirteen attempts, and we leave it alone. And so that's what I really appreciate about our team. It's just the shooting discipline that we've engaged in all season long. It's why we came back from a. 10 point deficit on our record it's why we climbed back into the standing so fast is because we are careful we are intentional and we we know what we're not good at stuff and we we know ourselves we take care of ourselves and so those are the type of things uh that that are testament to why i think this team um is all over the place in terms of what you think they can actually do because they have high level qualities and some of the players that we thought were quote unquote squubs now they're playing better now you're seeing guys step up, guys that we didn't have a whole lot of faith in. They're starting to come into their own. So it's like for the, all the trouble that the Lakers have, they're finding stuff now. We're finding guys being able to work together. Some of the adversity we've dealt with over the last couple of years, I think for our core, is kind of made for a resilience that allows us to kind of have poise in games like this. Uh, you know, it was just really it's a real testament to all that the Lakers have been through. I think this game was like a culmination of all of the lessons learned. All of the mistakes learned, all of the rants that we've been going on, 
with everything that we've talked about. It just came down to guys being down by 25 and then using common sense and, 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 and just conventional play, uh, getting the ball to the big man, getting the ball to the hot hand, driving into the paint, getting layups constantly, not settling for bad shots, but shooting enough of them to give yourself enough makes. All the different things, taking care of the ball in the second half, you know, getting out in the fast break where necessary, killing it in the paint consistently, making your free throws, all these different things ultimately made it so that we were able to come back and get this victory on the road despite being down by a million. So for me, win of the season, man, win of the season. Uh, I'm going to give the, the game ball to Thomas Bryant for the efficiency, even though I know LeBron James always deserves it when he plays like this. I'm never actually comfortable not giving the game ball to LeBron James most nights because he's always that guy. But when you see efficiency like this, the guys step outside of themselves, get their career high, two blocks, 14 rebounds after being benched and having confidence issues over the last several games. You can't tell me Thomas Bryant didn't earn his respect once again on this basketball floor. Uh, that's, that's just what it is. He earned every bit of the respect that I thought he had already earned prior to the Dallas game. And I just wish beyond a shadow of a doubt that we would have been playing him like this ever since he came back from the thumb injury. If we would have just gave him the same minutes tonight, you know, that we give every, if we get, gave him the same minutes that we gave him tonight every single night, I promise you, you probably see something like this every single night. Probably something like this. So I just want our coach to continue to, to, to have faith in guys and see where he's also making the same mistake with other players. Like Max Christie, for example. You go to Max a little more. He made that mistake with Winyan very early. You go to these guys a little more, and I promise you, you're going to see the same type of upside that you're seeing from Thomas in a game like this. Um, and it goes even further for our organization. Call up the G League guys. Same thing. Same thing. You're leaving production on the table, Lakers. I promise you, you're a lot better than you think. So these are the type of things that we know and we continue to preach, and we think that tonight is yet another um, example of why we should be taken seriously when we speak the way we do because we're seeing some of the stuff that we're talking about manifest and we saw how we got the win, the win tonight because we've been focused on those things and our team was focused on those things tonight so shout out to the Los Angeles Lakers for getting two big wins in a row against two quality championship level Western Conference contenders um, and I think we vaulted ourselves into a position where we need to be taken seriously um, after these two wins, man, we have to be taken seriously. You look at the Los Angeles Lakers, you see them winning close games now. The big comeback. You know, after, you know, these this, these are things that you have to say. These are qualities that the Lakers didn't necessarily show before these last two games. So we think we've left probably seven or eight games on the table. We could, we, we could have had about eight wins on top of what it is we have right now based on how many close games we've dropped. But I think because we've dropped those close games, we've learned some hard lessons, had some tough nights. I think now we know how we want to strategize some of them same games. I think we're going to win some of those same games going forward. And I think this evidence in these last two games have showed us that that's real. So what can I say, man? Here we go again. Genie, are you sure we don't want to trade the picks? Are we sure? You know, are we sure? Here we are beating another quality team without Anthony Davis. Imagine what we do with Anthony. Imagine what we do if we trade a little more. So I don't know. I don't know. Y'all know I'm not. 100% certain of what's right here. All I can honestly say is this is where we're at. Now, I look at the Western Conference. We just beat them on Memphis. They might be the best Western Conference team in, 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 out there. You look at uh, Denver. We beat them without AD, even though we, we, we gave them a game just a minute ago. I thought we could have beat them then, too. So it's like I'm not afraid of none of the top teams in the West. New Orleans don't scare me. They're going through too many health issues. We'll find out what's up with the Clippers in the next game. If we can beat them, that'll go a long way in us having confidence in what we can do in the West as well. So... I, that's exactly what I'm going to say. We need to go out there and, and, and be intentional against the Clippers. They are a much better basketball team than we've been. And we hate them with all our heart and soul. So we have to make it very, very intentional, just like we did these last two games, of shutting up our haters, shutting up our ops. Memphis, we shut them up. Portland, we shut them up. Clippers, we got to do the same thing. We got to do so We got to hit them with the trifecta, man. I'm not satisfied. I'm not satisfied. And this is the thing, you know. I'm going to address Russell Westbrook directly on this one. Aren't you having more fun now? This is a lot more fun to me, man. When you walk away knowing that the other team hang their head down, Patrick Beverly gets to laugh, laugh on Dame, this is much more fun, man. we got to be intentional on sacrificing so that we can feel this. Because I'm telling you right now, you think it's cool to lose because you've been forced to lose. 
You've been forced to deal with losing, rather. You don't have to be forced to deal with losing when you're a Laker. It's your birthright to win. So be intentional on shaking off all that other stuff that, that makes you cope with losing and start thinking about what your birthright is when you put on this purple and gold. We about winning. And we're going to do so if we all believe we can and do the things necessary to make sure it happens. It starts with Genie, and it trickles all the way down to the final guy on the roster. We must not rock the baby and get all happy and talk about having fun when it's not leading to victories wearing this uniform. Simply put, if you want to do that, do it elsewhere. Don't do it here. Because what we're about, we're about enjoying the fact that we've won after sacrificing through the grueling rigors of trying to beat others. Then we have fun. Then we are feeling like it's worth it. Then we know our effort has done what it's supposed to do. Otherwise, we just run around shooting the ball. You might as well play for the Globetrotters or something. You know what I'm saying? But if you're going to put on this uniform, you know you're the pinnacle of the, of the league. And we have a, a reputation to uphold. And most importantly, we got enemies that enjoy seeing us lose. So we got to keep on being intentional and, and beat them. Beat them every chance we get. So that's what this is, Portland. You know, we want to send condolences um, to Bill Shonley and his family. As I said, we had a... Uh, them on our minds tonight that hasn't changed i said a prayer for them during the third quarter as a matter of fact so we definitely want them to know we're thinking about them and then on this day we're happy we got our win um and that's what it's about we we bring our best to our competitors we don't give you a night off because you had a tough night we're going to bring it to you because that's what we want you to do to us when we have tough nights and so that's what it is man we won a championship on our on, on one of the tough the toughest year possible so uh, Miami didn't take us lightly. None of the teams in the bubbles took us lightly. So we know what it takes. We know what, what our opponents respect, and we bring our best. So that's what it's about. That's how we honor y'all. So that's what it is, man. I'm happy as I can be. I, I don't know if, if, if you can make me any happier in a regular season situation. Uh, just do this. Do this every night, and I think we're going to be good. Um, nothing, nothing easy coming. Nothing easy coming. Please don't think it's about to be an easy week after this. It gets harder. The Clippers, then we got a back-to-back against San Antonio. I expect LeBron probably to sit that game. Uh, that's just my guess. Who knows? But he ain't going to usually play no back-to-backs, and I can't see us sitting him against the Clippers. Can't see that. Uh, but then we got a road trip, five-game road trip coming up at some point. I don't know if that's directly after that or not, but we're going to be playing New York, playing Brooklyn. You know, we, we got some teams. I think we see New Orleans in that stretch as well, something like that. So it's not going to get easier. We still got two games against the Chicago Bulls coming up, the Eastern Conference teams we ain't even seen yet. So it's a lot It's a lot of basketball to be played, but it's a lot of home games coming up, which we should be excited about. And this was a big road win we got here tonight. So Thomas Bryant, man, salute. Dennis Schroeder, LeBron James, Patrick Beverly, Troy Brown, everybody, man, salute. This was the type of win this here Laker fan can always remember and respect from this particular season. So thank you all for that. And thank you all for watching BDL 44. And I'm out.